Hi, uh, I just wanted to do a quick video showing you how I uh, attach a GWS 543 prop to the Park Zone Sequoia 26. Here we have the Sequoia, and right now there's no propeller on here. And if you were to look very closely, you would see that the shaft is threaded. And the stock propeller is threaded on, and you basically unscrew it to take it back, take it off. Now, one of the problems that you have with this is that you, it's very difficult to hold the shaft and thread on a propeller, especially when you're going to the GWS propeller. So one of the things that you can do is you can cut the tape on the side of the fuselage over here and over here, and then basically that allows you to tilt this upper portion of the fuselage open so that you have access to, in, to the inside. Now I think after a while you'll probably just want to cut the uh, tape on both sides, over here and back here, here and here, so that you can actually lift this off. Now basically it's really easy to access everything in here. Here is your receiver your, uh, with two servos, there's your aileron servo, your 8 millimeter motor, and your gearbox. Now the reason why you need to gain access in here is you've got to be able to hold that shaft uh, still as you screw on the propeller. And now you can put your finger on the gear and hold it while you thread it. So that's why we want, that's one of the reasons why you want to be able to do this. Other people have gone in here and moved the receiver back here to push the center of gravity further aft, uh, which is a pretty uh, difficult uh, process to do, but it, people have been doing that. Okay, one of the things I've done here is I've added two magnets here and two magnets here and a pin so that basically it just snaps right in place. Now this isn't something I thought of. Many people have been using magnets to hold hatches and so forth on, on model airplanes. Okay. Now one of the things that you may also be may want to do is to make a stand so that you have some place to rest your airplane while, while you're working on it. This particular stand is nice from the standpoint that I can flip the plane over, put it up here upside down and I don't have to worry about the rudder getting uh, bent. So this is uh, just an easy way to hold the airplane while you're working on it. This is the GWS 543 prop, and it has a 4 millimeter bore. Well, a 4 millimeter bore and a 1.5 millimeter shaft don't go together too easily, except GWS came out with the part, this part right here. It actually would have six spinners on it. It's only got four on it now on the sprue. And this is part GW slash SBN001. Two of the spinners, this is one of them, has a small hole in it, which is suitable for mounting on a one and a half millimeter shaft. All you have to do, and then there's a hub, and all you have to do is push the hub onto the prop like this, and now you're ready to mount this propeller on, onto the plane. So let's do that. So basically I'm going to hold the gear with my one finger, find the location here, and then thread it on. Now the further you thread it on, the more truer the prop is apt to spin. So you want to get it on pretty far. Now one of the things that I've done so that I could screw this on further is I've sanded back the front of the cowl about an eighth of an inch. It gives me more threads on that spinner. Now one of the problems that a number of people have been talking about is that the torque of the propeller actually screws itself further and further on until it makes contact with the cowl. So now that I've sanded it down I have more clearance but I still could go back and, and make contact. So once I've got this screwed on to where I want it I'm going to go in here and put some glue on the shaft 
to keep it from going any further back. So now that I've got the propeller on, I can go ahead and put the top back on and go fly. I've made some other changes. Down here, this is a 240 milliamp hour cell instead of the standard cell that comes with it. It has more capacity, but because it's a larger cell, it also has the potential to keep more current going out at one particular time. So there isn't a voltage drop. So you wind up with more power going to the propeller. The other thing that people have been doing is moving the CG back. When this comes out of the box, one of the problems is, is the CG comes out to be about 26 millimeters. Now that's measured from the leading edge of the wing at the root back. And so basically when you balance it, you find out that the CG is about 26 millimeters. Well, according to Park Zone, the CG is supposed to be between 29 and 31 millimeters. So basically what you have to do is add weight to the tail. By going to a bigger battery and moving the battery further back, you reduce the amount of weight that you have to add to the plane. And what weight you are adding here turns out to be longer flights and more, with more power. But ultimately you still wind up having to add weight to the tail, at least I did. And so what I did was I put a screw back here. Now the nice thing about using this screw is I can add little magnets to it. And as I add more and more magnets to it, I can pull the center of gravity further and further back. A lot of people are flying their planes back at 36 millimeters, mine is set at 30. So if I want to experiment and move it back to 32 or 33, I can calculate how many magnets I need to put back here, and I just put that many magnets back here and the CG will be pulled back. So that's just a neat way to do it. Now eventually I get to the point where I'm really satisfied with where the CG is. I can take this off and I'll put one weight on here, which would be maybe a little neater looking than having a screw come, coming out the bottom. Although you don't really see that when the plane is flying around. And you really don't see the splotchy red color on here either when it's flying around. And the reason it's splotchy is because I used ink instead of paint. I wanted to minimize the amount of weight I was adding when I gave this plane some color. So I used ink. A little splotchy, but when it's flying you don't notice it. The fact that it is red and white makes the plane much more visible in flight. And so the, you don't have the uh, chance of getting disorientated and putting the plane in because you just didn't know which way it was pointed. Okay, I think that's everything I, I wanted to cover, and hopefully that makes it clearer how to mount a GWS prop. I guess one of the things that I should mention is, well, why do you want to go to a GWS prop? This prop performs much better than the stock propeller. It's also stronger, but that's not the, the, the reason. The main reason to put this propeller on here is because the plane flies much better. Now, one of the problems with GW slash SPN001 is that you may have trouble finding these right now. Uh, most of the stores are sold out. Another option is to use these little wooden cylinders, plywood cylinders. And these can be purchased at Radical RSC. And the way they work is you stick those inside the hub of the propeller, get the right position here, and then you screw that on to the shaft. Now what most people are doing is once they've screwed it onto the shaft, they've been unscrewing it and they hit it with CA, thin CA, and what that does is it hardens up the threads. So then when they screw it back on, they have a nice strong thread holding the propeller onto the shaft. Okay, well that's it.